Welcome to tutorial on 22.6. In this video, I'm going to show you an example of carrier statistics in SugarCube 2.36. So, so far we have seen how we can use the set macro to create and change the value of variables. We can use the if macro to create comparisons. And between the two of them, we can use expressions. We use the assignment expression for the set macro and the conditional expression for the if macro. We have also seen how we can now create additional interactivity by using the link macro as well. So let's combine all of those concepts as well as working with passages and links to start to create more complex examples. So we know from previous videos that we can put the if macro inside the link macro. We can also put the set macro inside the link macro. So if we start to put all these concepts together, we can build the basis of a character statistics example. That is, we can start some particular values, some statistics, and then as we move through a story, use them different ways. Generally, stories with this and those relying on more role-playing game-like mechanics will generally allow a reader or player, depending on what word you want to use, to assign certain points. And that's what this particular example goes into. So let's walk through these two passages and how they work by combining all the different macros and concepts that we've seen in previous videos in SugarCube up to this point. So let's move over to the start passage right here. I have three different story variables, brains, bra, and points. Notice that brains and bra will be my two things I'm going to keep track of, and they're both set to zero. And then remember, of course, if we're using the English abbreviations to, is, and you'll see more examples in this video, we're using TwineScript, which is just additional things SugarCube allows us to allow authors to make writing in SugarCube just a little bit easier, built on the underlying language of JavaScript. So I'm using two. We're set brains to zero, set brawl to zero, and then finally set points to five. Now, as I've discussed in previous videos, we often want to prepare the value of variables very early on in the story, generally within the first few passages or using some advanced patterns within SugarCube in a totally different dedicated passage for that purpose. So in this video, I'm establishing the values of variables that I will be using throughout the story, even though it's only two passages, in the first passage itself. So let's go ahead and get into the second passage where most of the work is being done. So we saw in a previous video how we could use the link macro by showing some type of text to a reader, which they then click on, and then we can set the destination SugarCube will go to after it completes running whatever codes within that link macro. And this was particularly useful in another example we saw where every time we clicked on link, the link macro generated, we were refreshing the passage. So let's continue to use that pattern. So this passage right here is doing a number of different things, but it's only doing them in two particular patterns. So let's kind of walk through what the pattern is, and I'll show you the two different ways I've implemented it in this particular passage. So notice right here, we're continuing to use a link macro, again, defining what should be shown to the reader and where it should go as a destination. So remember, when we use the link macro in this way, it runs everything that's within it, and then it goes to the destination. The trick we're using, though, in this particular example, and as we've seen in previous usages of the same pattern, that we can go to, that is the destination, of the exact same passage we're in, that is, the entire passage will refresh every time a reader interacts with something. So inside this, I'm using an if macro, again, using a conditional expression. I'm creating some type of comparison of one thing to another. I'm continuing to use TwineScript. I mentioned it earlier in this video. In this case, I'm using greater than the GT abbreviation, part of TwineScript that SugarCube gives us to make things just slightly easier if we want to use them. And then I'm doing two different things. I'm increasing brains by one and decreasing points by one. In each case, what I want to do is set up an initial pool of points, five that we previously saw in the other passage, and then each time a reader clicks plus next to brains or brawl, I will go ahead and increase that statistic by one and decrease points by one. However, I never want points to go into the negative, so what I've done is created a kind of internal check. In this case, if long as points is greater than zero, we will perform this op operation. As soon as it's not, though, that is as soon as it gets down to one and then crosses over into zero, we won't do it anymore. 
Finally, to allow a reader to reassign all these points, I have one last usage way down here at the bottom. In this case, when they click on reset, it will again come back to statistics and reset all these values back to where they started over here in the start passage. So let's see this in action, then we'll talk through it one last time. So our initial setup of all the variables, moving over to statistics. And now when we click on any of these three links, we will immediately get refreshed. So plus, refresh, plus, refresh. Notice I current one, current one, remaining points three. Notice in each particular case, it's the same pattern for brains that it is for brawl. That we're just using the link macro inside that link macro as an if macro, inside that if macro are two usages of the set macro. So let's go ahead and use up all points, and then notice we can never go into the negative, nor will any of these go past the value, and we can't use either in that way. Let's say I'm not happy with those, and I want to go ahead and reset points. Reset, notice remaining points is back to five, and these are reset back to zero. In each case, notice as I pointed out, we are continuing to use the link macro in this way, refreshing the contents of the passage by going to, going to the destination, that is, of the exact same passage we're already in. So in each three cases, we are immediately showing feedback to the reader. This is what's happening. We are adjusting these values. Here's how they're being adjusted, and here's the remaining points, which again is a good pattern to get into when we kind of let the reader know, especially when working with statistical values or working with mechanics that are a little more role-playing in nature, to always let the reader know what's happening if we can and let them know additional details, especially if they're assigning points or using resources in particular ways. So let's wrap up this video by reviewing what I've talked about. We can start to combine the link macro with the if macro with the set macro to create slightly more complex stories than we've already seen. Using all of these concepts up until this point, working through this series, particularly on Sugarcube, we can start to work with more role-playing game elements if we want those in our story, as well as other statistics working in the same pattern we've just seen. By using a destination that is the same passage we are currently in, we can refresh the entire contents of the passage and always keep the reader updated. As we saw in this particular case, that if we want to go ahead and use a poll of points, we assign initial values right here, five, move to another passage, and then we can work through this particular pattern we've seen repeated twice here. There's one last thing I want to point out. Remember that when we work with the link macro, it runs silently. And remember, as I mentioned in the previous video, that Sugarcube is borrowing a lot of concepts from previous story formats and early versions of Twine. The word silently has very special meaning. It means ignore all output. So we can't produce output within the link macro by itself. So I'm using right here text outside the link macro to create that same effect. And there are other ways to do it. But we're always remember, in particular when working with the link macro, that it runs silently, ignores all output, so we can't produce output with that particular macro. So used or cost here, as we see, we can increase statistics for brains or brawl, as well as reset all the points by just using the same pattern three different times and adjusting our usages based on our current knowledge of the if macro and the set macro within Sugarcube 2.36 and Twine 2.6. Thanks for watching.